Here again, another week has gone by, and we are sitting in for another week in 1 Corinthians, a study in 1 Corinthians. I want to welcome you to the Prodigal Son podcast, and I want to take this time to thank all the partners. Partners, thank you for all that you do, sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to give his word away all over this world, all over this planet free of charge, and you're helping us do that. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today, a hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. I thank God for faithful people that partner with this ministry to not only sow their finances into this ministry, but sow their prayer time and sharing this podcast all over this planet so others can be set free. Not by Stacy's words, but by the Word of God, the truth in God's Word that we are giving away free of charge all over this planet. Oh, I thank God for for what we are seeing take place in this ministry, in this podcast. Uh, this, This study in Corinthians has been going on. This is week six. And it just gets stronger and stronger. We we went through Romans. We went through the whole the whole bookmark that we give away on the podcast to to help people find out who they are. And when I finished that up, the Lord said, "Go into Paul's epistles. Go into Paul's epistles and teach these people these people that want to know who they are, want to grow strong in who they are." He said, teach them what my word says, not what religion says, not what all the junk out here in this world has contaminated Christianity with. He said, no, but teach them what thus saith the word of God to strengthen them, give them victory in this world. People need victory in this world. And that's what that's what I am commissioned to do in this podcast, in this ministry, to reach out to the world and show them just how much God is for them. Just show them just how much he cares for them and wants to see them succeed. Because when they succeed, they they give an example to other people all over this world that God is working in their life. They'll come up and say, hey, what about me? What can I do to get what you've got in this world? And you know what? That'll always point to Jesus. It'll always point to God's word. It'll always put, put be pointed back to what the foundation of this ministry is, and that is God's word. God's word is true above all opinion, and I'm going to shout it from the rooftops everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, I'm going to stand and be strong in what God has written down for his people to stand in. Glory to God. I, I just want to encourage you to take this time, download this this phone app, and get all these podcasts downloaded to your phone on a a six-day-a-week basis, and find out what God is saying to you, for you, and about you in His Word. My prayers for the world we live in today comes out of Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. You know, Paul wanted the Ephesians to get hold of and know the love that God had for them, the grace and the mercy that He wanted to bestow on them. And that is my prayer for the world that I live in today, that every person on the face of this planet comes to realize and to understand the love and the grace and the goodness that God has for each and every one of the people that live on this planet today. Ephesians 1.15, Paul said, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or a leader or anything else, not only only in this world, 
but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church, and the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the Creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from His glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through His mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, Forever and ever, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that he shows me that love, that mercy, that grace, and that goodness every day of my life. And he shows me that more and more every day in his word. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. Lord, touch my mind, touch my mouth. Help me be the light, Lord, that you can shine to this world. Lord, that you can shine through to this world to see people's lives change through the truth and what you have written down in your word for us as children of God, children of God to live in today. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. I pray this in Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Now, we're going to be in second or 1 Corinthians 2 and 16 today. And this is, this is something that if you'll, get, if, if, if you'll get a revelation of what this says about us, about God's children, it'll, it, will, it will strengthen you past being tempted and tried in this world. Listen to what this said. It says, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. We have the mind of Christ. If you're born again, if you have been born into the family of God, you have the mind of Christ. I want to read this in the, uh, the New Living in the Amplified Classic Version of 1 Corinthians 2.16, the, the New Living says, For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. The Amplified Classic says, For who has known or understood the mind, the counsels, and the purposes of the Lord, so as to guide and to instruct him and give him knowledge? But we have the mind of Christ, the Messiah, and do hold the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of his heart. That's what I want to talk to you today about, about Christian people. God's children have the mind of Christ. And you say, well, boy, I don't know where how how to uh, get a hold of that one because my mind is is in bad shape a lot of days. And I, I'm I'm going to explain to you this is this is something that the majority of of the church born again people people that go to church on a regular basis and and do their best to live a Christian life they don't know this truth they can't they they don't take this truth. To heart, and that's what I want you to have a revelation of today. That you have, we have the mind of Christ, and and in having that, we can understand and evaluate all things in this world. But you got to know, you know, how to evaluate those, those things. You know, we were talking about that yesterday in the fifteenth verse. It, it listen to me. You said, "Well, how do I do that? How do I develop?" That mind that, that, that God has given me, 
Paul said it. We have the mind of Christ. So how do you develop that? I'm going to tell you how to develop that. I'm going to have to go back into Romans. We've done studied this scripture, but it is it is something that we all need to realize and understand. I'm going to start with the 12th chapter, Romans 12, and I'm going to start with number one. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that we present your that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You say, How do I do how do I renew my mind? You renew your mind with what God says. I was talking to him earlier at the jail today, and, and this is something that that is so evident to the world we live in. That you know, we live in a world that people do not realize who they are. The the church don't realize who God has made them to be through Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. And until they quit quit believing the lies of religion. And and start believing what thus saith the word says. You know, I've I've heard it over and over in my lifetime. Good people, don't get me wrong. I'm talking about good people that that purpose that purpose to argue the 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 word of God and stand in complete defiance of it. I've heard it over and over. I don't believe it that way. I don't believe what what the the word thus saith the word of God. I don't believe that it's meaning what it says. People, that is people that have sold out to religion and have decided that their religious views of of the Scripture that they're reading overrides just exactly what it says. That's the reason I, I read so many different translations of the Word on this podcast. I, because I want the, the meaning of God's Word to sink in with people, and a lot of times you read. I study the King James. I a lot nine times out of ten when I'm quoting a verse, I'm quoting the King James Version Bible. But I also study the New Living, the Amplified, and any other version that I can. I can get something and and renew my mind to what God is saying in that verse, because a lot of times in the King James Version. We 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 just kind of it, it's kind of vague. You, you, we don't you don't understand old English, and and, and unless we're we're really uh, just I'm talking about versed in old English. You read over stuff and you and you you don't grasp anything that it says. And I, I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. There's a lot of people in this world that that. Our, our King James Version only, and they'll fight you over the King James Version Bible. But the fact of the matter is they're, they're in the dark about a lot of what God's Word says because they won't look to the to the, the Greek and the Hebrew meanings of the words that are in there. That's the reason I do the Amplified Classic Version because there's a, there was a group of people that went through the Bible diligently and put the definitions of key words Throughout the entire book, the Amplified Classic version of of the of the Bible is a lot thicker. There's a lot more words in it because the the translators wanted the people to understand what those those verses mean. And for somebody that will just that just turns off any other version other than the King James, they're turning off enlightenment to what God wants them to see. Now. You you say, well, we've kind of got off the subject. No, have we really? Because we're talking about we have the mind of Christ. Well, how do you how do you develop that mind? You develop your, your mind, the the mind of Christ. You develop that mind to 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 walk in the truths of what God's word says and throw away all the religious junk that you've been told in your in your lifetime. I've said this over and over. Until we start putting away the things that we believe that are not linked to God's word if if you if you believe something in this in in this book or in your christian life rather and it's not directly linked 
to a scripture, two or three scriptures that you can honestly say, this is, this is the reason I believe this. Don't throw it out. I'm talking about just throw it out. Don't, but don't believe it ever again. Cause I've, I've heard people say it. You know, they, they, they spout off what they believe and, and, and how they believe it. And I'll say, well, where's the verse you're talking about? Well, it's in there. Well, show me. If you know where, if you are so adamant on believing a certain way, give me some scripture that I can develop my thinking on what you're saying. Because nine times out of 10, people that are, that are that adamant on arguing the Bible don't know what it says to start with. They know what they have heard, but they've never uh, they've, they've never studied this book and linked the scriptures that they th- those people that they learned that from were using to to do it. And a lot of times it gets all skewed and messed up. Listen, we have the mind of Christ, and if you're going to walk in that mind and 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 walk in the truths of what Jesus Christ wants us. to to live in and walk in, you're going to have to develop, renew your mind, your carnal mind, to what thus saith the Word of God. Because I promise you, I promise you that the Holy Spirit will never direct you contrary to what thus saith God's Word. I promise you that. And that's the reason I want you to develop your thinking to go right along with what Paul was telling the Corinthians. We have the mind of Christ. Let's live in it. Let's walk in it. And let's let the, the, the Holy Spirit guide us through these truths. And understand, I'm going to read it one more time out of the King James. It says, For who has known the mind of the Lord that we may instruct him? It said, Who is it? He said, But we have the mind of Christ. In other words, you have been given everything you need to operate in that understanding that he's talking about here. How do you do it? You say, how? I'll tell them at the jail all the time, listen, you don't need me in here. You've got God's word and you have his precious Holy Spirit living inside of you and directing you and showing you to, to, to guide your, your Christ-like mind, to, to walk in the truths and the, and the strength that God has given us. And to live in that, to live in those truths, I'm going to tell you something. There's freedom in that that you're not going to get from a bottle, from a pill, for anything else in this world, some carnal thing. No, you're going to get the truths of God's Word. You're going to take those and, and live in that truth. And I promise you that those truths will set you on a path that the devil can't run you off. I, he can't he can't hinder you ever again because you have sold out to the fact of what thus saith the word of God. You have sold out to the fact that you are going to believe God's word a far above any, any man's opinion. Believe that today. Believe that you have the mind of Christ. If you are born again, God has given you that. Stand in that truth. Believe that truth. And walk in what God has said to you, for you, and about you in his word. Now listen, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to to take God's word and understand it for what God wants you to understand it for. Listen to me today. Listen to me what I'm ta- I'm, I'm, I'm getting at. Because there's millions of people out here that believe in God. They believe that God sent Jesus down here to die on the cross for their sins and was raised on the third day for their justification. They believe that, but they've never invited Jesus Christ to be Lord of their life. They've never confessed him as Lord. Romans 10 and 9 says, If you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says, Thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be saved. Then you have, you will have that mind that you need, that mind of Christ, that spirit-led mind, that spiritually-led person that, that, that you have desired to be your entire life, that Christian person. And it all starts through salvation. 
Now, if you're if you if you've been born again, I want to invite you to get in God's Word and find out what He says. Forget about what religion has said over the years, but get in the God's Word and find out what He says. And if you've just been born again, I want to encourage you. Go back to June the 21st and find out, June 21st of 2021, and find out what God has said in His Word to you, for you, and about you. Glory to God. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch Him change your life forever. Hey, if you're a a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you do, sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to give His Word away all over this planet free of charge, free of charge to anybody that'll take it and believe it. I, I thank God for faithful partners that do just that. I pray Mark ten twenty nine and 30 over you today, a hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do so into his kingdom. Now, I want to encourage you, download this podcast app, this phone app, and get all these podcasts that we are putting out all over this planet free so that you can be fed and strong in him, in his word today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.